thanks for joining me for another Garden City Arts online program. My name is Katie Guthrie and you are joining me in my basement slash makeshift uh, kids art studio and we are going to make our own figures that are full of action. Okay, so action figures. Our inspiration is artist Keith Haring. He uh, was a pop artist working in the 80s, and his artwork always had lots of fun, kind of cartoonish figures doing outlandish things, and they were all always colorful as well. So I'm gonna lead you through step by step on how to first make a Keith Haring action figure that is moving and doing something fun, and then second, we'll talk about how to add color to your piece. Now, you get to choose how you add color. It's whatever you have at home, all right? I happen to have oil pastels, I have temper paint, and I have Sharpies and a white crayon that we're gonna utilize as well. So, let's go ahead and get started. Are you ready to have fun? I'm ready. All right, very first thing we need to cover would be the basics. Mark making. We are not going to push hard with our pencil. When we do that, it leaves a very, very dark line that will not disappear, no matter how hard you try to erase it. Instead, we are going to use slightly lighter lines that don't kind of indent the paper because we are not pushing as hard, and that will disappear when we try to erase them. So let's check really fast and I'll show you what I mean. Can you still see the X left behind? I do. How about the check mark? The check disappears because I was pressing nice and light and not indenting the paper. So light as a feather, don't push too hard. Don't hold your pencil too hard. You can even hold it as, at a diagonal if that helps. We do not push hard. Okay, let's go ahead and get started on the more than basics. To make your Keith Haring figure, we are going to first draw a stick figure. Now, I bet I know what you are thinking. Your art teacher probably told you, no stick figures. And the reason for that is, well, they're quite boring. So we're gonna take our stick figure and use it to plan. Stick figures are okay as long as you're using them to plan, as long as they don't stick around. So first step, let's talk about how to do a stick figure. Now, I bet you've all drawn a stick figure like this. That's a little boring. We're gonna draw a little bit more interesting stick figure. First, we're gonna start with his head. Now, you have to decide what your figure is doing before you can really draw a good figure. For instance, your figure could be playing basketball, could be doing yoga, maybe he or she is dancing, going for a walk, what have you, okay? So, choose what your stick figure is doing. My stick figure is dancing. So, her or his head is going to be slightly lower than if she was standing straight up and down. She's breaking out with some moves. Then her spine, if she was standing, would be up and down, just like her stick figure. But she's kind of bent over because she's dancing. Next, we're gonna put in shoulders and hips. Those are both things that are missing from our ordinary stick figure. Now, these shoulders, if she was standing straight up and down, would be a horizontal line. If she's bent over like that, they're not gonna be horizontal at all, are they? They're gonna be diagonal. Next, I'm gonna do her hips, and her hips are gonna be a bit more horizontal because I want her to look like she's bending. Do you see that? Next, I need to decide what her arms and legs are gonna be doing. Now, I'm not gonna just draw one single line off of the shoulders. That would be a little boring because in real life, we do not have just straight arms. There are joints in our arms and legs that bend. A joint is where your bones are connected and where they are allowed to bend and move. So every time there's a joint, 
there is an opportunity for movement. So first, I'm going to have his or her shoulders have joints, and I'm going to build the upper part of the arm from the shoulder, add a joint, do the lower part of the arm, add a joint for the wrist, and then put in a little tiny thing for a hand. Okay. Next, I need to decide what her other arm is doing. Maybe, let's see, maybe it's going up just the same. So, upper arm, elbow, lower arm, elbow, hand. Maybe she's playing basketball. Who knows what she's doing? Okay, next we're going to come to the legs. Legs are going to be the same kind of concept as the arms. So we have upper part of the arm and a joint for the knee. We have the lower part of the leg and a joint for the ankle. And then we have her or his foot. Now, kind of looks like she's doing yoga. I'm changing what our uh, figure is doing. She's stretching. So I'm gonna have both of her feet planted solid to the ground and her upper body is twisting and moving and so are her arms just like you would if you were doing some yoga or dancing. So we have a stick figure. Now we're gonna talk about the next step to take our stick figure from boring to awesome. We need to do something called adding volume. Volume or area is when you add space to the figure. You add more so that it's not just a bunch of lines. There's volume to your action figure's body. So really fast, I'm going to draw the stick figure over here so you can see how I'm going to add the volume to her body. Okay, all finished. I drew it a little bit different than the first one. That's okay, you can always make changes. So next I'm going to add volume. First off, basically we're adding um, extra lines on either side to bulk up this line and give it more volume, more area, more space. The very first thing I'm going to do is connect her shoulders to her hips. Now, you could do straight lines. You could make it a bit curvier if you want. Okay, it's up to you. Remember, these lines don't have to be straight. They can be kind of curvy and curved like our bodies do. Next, I'm going to add some volume to his or her legs, but I'm going to just add the volume to the insides of her legs. Let me redraw that really fast. I didn't like that line. So like I said, I'm going to add a little bit more volume. I'm also going to make this part a little longer. Next, I'm going to add volume to her arms. So I'm going to go to the inside of her arms and bulk it up one more time. Oh, again, I didn't like that line. So if you don't like it, erase it. That's why we press light. So now the cool thing about Keith Haring is that he didn't bother with fingers, which I really appreciate because fingers are not my favorite things to draw. So Instead of fingers, we're just drawing a nice little round ball for where his or her hands would go. Now, we have arms, we have legs, and we have a torso. Next, we just need to add a neck. That's kind of important. Holds our head on. All right, and our action figure now has a little bit of volume. I'm going to go in and I'm going to erase my stick figure like I said, it's okay to have a stick figure as long as it disappears. We don't want it to stick around. I'm going to erase the joints. I'm going to erase the little lines inside. And now we have 
what looks more like a Keith Haring figure. Now, Keith Haring kept it simple. I may have added a few more details than I needed to. He kept his figures rather blocky and solid, okay? So you can keep them a bit more cartoony if you want. Here's another example that I have for you of someone uh, dancing. Maybe he's an actor or she's an actor. Okay, so you can keep it a little bit more blockish or you can add a little bit more um, dimension or volume where muscles would go if you know where they go. So now that we have a good idea of the basics, let's turn to our paper. Okay, friends, we have covered the basics. Now we are ready to get started with our finished product or final product. Blah, blah, blah. So you need to decide, do you want to do your drawing as a landscape? or as a portrait. If you do a portrait, you probably only have room for one to two figures. If you do landscape, you might have room for your whole family. You could probably do three or more figures. It's your choice what you decide to do. I'm gonna focus on just one figure today and I'm going to do a portrait. So next, I need to decide where to put my figure and how big I want my figure. I don't want you to only do a little teeny tiny figure that's just off in the middle of this ginormous piece of paper. Instead, fill your space up better, okay? Draw it bigger so that it fills almost all of your space. Next, if you put it in the center, it can be a little boring. I would suggest moving it off to the side maybe a little bit. So I'm going to put my figure's head. I'm gonna start kind of in the center but with the idea that her body is going to go off to one side of the paper. So I start with my head and then I'm gonna put in my spine. Now, proportions are hard. If you need help, look at your brother or sister. Uh, ask your mom or dad to strike a pose, all right? That'll help you get the right proportions. And if it's not perfect, that's okay. It's kind of cartoony. We're just kind of learning how, uh, little basics on how to take a stick figure and make it into an action figure. Next, I'm going to do the same thing that I just demonstrated and I'm gonna put in some leaning shoulders and some nice solid flat hips. So shoulders, hips, spine, head. Now I'm ready to move on. I'm just gonna do this really quickly and speed up the video. Remember to put in those joints. And figure done, stick figure done. Now, we're going to add volume just like before. So we start uh, from shoulder to hip, kind of connecting those two areas. Then we can add in the legs. I'm gonna go on the inside of the legs. It's a little bit easier. Add a little bit more to the feet because I once again kind of made my legs a little scrawny. And once again, going in between or inside the legs. Okay, next I'm going to add volume to the arms and I'm going to do the same thing, kind of adding more volume on the inside than the outside of the arms. And you know, I always forget this when I'm drawing these, but it's Keith Haring. It can be really, really cartoony and that is absolutely fine. So it doesn't have to be perfect and anatomically correct, meaning 
Um, it's realistic to our muscles that we have in our bodies. It's okay if it's not perfect, no worries. Once you have your stick figure drawn in and you make sure you don't have any open holes in your volume to let all the air out, then you can start erasing. Because we're gonna fill this awesome volume stick figure thing, Keith Haring figure, whatever it is, we're gonna fill it in with color. Okay, now this looks pretty good. I may go back in and add some more volume, maybe make the head a little bit smaller, just kind of change up the proportions a little bit. Um, I can do all sorts of things to make this better and so can you if you have time at home. Or you can just say it is what it is and move on. It's up to you. If you're a perfectionist like I am, then you'll probably be tweaking it and making it better for the next like 15 minutes. But for now, I'm going to move on. So when you are at this point, you need to do a few more different, uh, a few more details. So we have the body done. Now, what about the background? Most Keith Haring figures would have some kind of background. What he would do is put a line going behind the figure's body. The reason it goes behind and it's not underneath their feet is because think about it this way. If he's standing on this line, he could fall over really easy. He's like a tightrope walker. But if the line's behind him, then he is solid, standing on solid ground. Okay, so I'm gonna put the line behind. Next, you could go in and add little action lines like Keith Haring did a lot of the time. Wherever there was movement, maybe she or he is clapping her or his hands, okay? So there'd be that little line popping up. You can also put lines in the background if you want. Now you could do those with pencil or you could do them with crayon and go back in with watercolor, okay? You can even add in special shapes, different things like that. Um, Keith Haring was a pop artist, so he liked recognizable shapes that are easy to identify, like hearts or stars or dollar signs. He really liked dollar signs. So you could do kind of a combination of that in the background. Now, you're probably like, why is she doing that in white crayon? You can't see it. Well, that is true, but it won't be forever because we are going to put paint over it and wherever the waxy crayon touched the paper, if we pushed hard enough, it will block out the paint and stay, keep the paper staying white. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in with a Sharpie. And when I'd use my Sharpie, it is going to make my lines permanent. It's permanent marker. So once you have done this, you're locked in, you can't do anything different. So make sure that you are happy with your figure. Now, do you notice how I'm going pretty fast and using pretty bold lines? The reason for that is because if I do little short choppy lines, you will be able to see it. Do you see how the line quality is different? So go fast, go bold, Sometimes you make a mistake, but you know what? Sometimes you can just call it a happy accident like Bob Ross. Okay, now I can put my action lines in and I'm ready to add color. So I could add paint, especially if I used white crayon. I could color with oil pastels. I could even do a combination of all of those things. So perhaps for the body, I make oil pastel. I, I use oil pastels for the body and I wanted to use purple, but I didn't realize I don't have very much purple in this oil pastel. I have this little teeny tiny stuff. So I'm kind of making do, hoping I don't run out before I get done.
Okay, so now I'm going to take a brush and some paint water and I'm going to paint in the background. And when I do that, I'm going to have a really neat effect because in theory, maybe not, there we go. In theory, my white is should pop up. And you can see sometimes it takes a little bit of time, but they should start popping up. Or maybe I should have used watercolor so that it showed up better. Well, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't in art. It's okay if it doesn't. You can always change it up, do something different. What I like to do when I'm painting is I go right along the figure's body. I like to outline my space and then fill it in. So what I'm going to do is go back in, since my white crayon trick did not work, it will work with watercolors. Uh, temper paint and light yellow paint was just a bad choice on your art teacher's choice. If I had chosen a different color combination and different materials, it probably would have worked just fine. So what I can do, I can let my paint dry and I can use my oil pastels to create those hearts and um, stars and money symbols and all the other fun stuff that pop artists like to use that were easily identifiable symbols. Okay, so I have the start of my figure. Then I can come back in and add the background, or I'm sorry, not the background. I guess it is part of the background, but the ground of the background. Now I'm going fast, but you could take your time, do a really good job. Oh, I missed a little tiny spot. Take your time, do a really, really good job and really make these something that you are excited to hang on your fridge until next week when you come back and make some more art. And all done. Now, you can of course go back in and add those symbols that we talked about that I think all pop artists like to use in their artwork. 
And once you are done, you need to sign your work. So, voila, we're all finished. Of course, there's a few things that I might come back in and do some touch-ups later, but for now, you learned how to do a figure that has movement and action and is doing something quite fun. I hope you join me next week for more of the kids' artwork, and we will do another fun project. <laughs>